Okay, this is the last section of the sex offenders lecture, just a couple slides here, but it was kind of different in topic and to make things easy to find on YouTube, I decided to, to separate it out. So we're gonna talk about special topics or special populations of sex offenders. And this has become increasingly um, emphasized in recent research. These are uh, hot up and coming areas. We're gonna start with a spotlight on another Canadian researcher, Dr. Michael Cito, uh, is becoming incredibly well known, um, has come, uh, is incredibly well known um, in the sex offender research literature. Uh, his research focuses on um, pedophilia and on internet sex offenders. So I'm going to focus a little bit on internet sex offenders. Uh, he's done a lot of um, really interesting consultation work with uh, places like Facebook and uh, the Vatican uh, to help talk about ways to kind of um, uh, reduce um, or prevent sexual abuse of children. And uh, so you know, preventing sexual abuse within the clergy or people targeting people online for um, underage people online for sex offenses. So he's done lots of neat stuff. He is the only person I know who has a selfie with the Pope. Uh, so Michael Cito has published a couple books, um, but we're going to talk about internet sex offenders as that's a particularly unique area. Uh, and as a reminder, you guys are probably young enough that still the internet feels to you like it always existed. Um, but it is important to remember, and especially in the sex offender field, that research, particularly follow-up research looking at sex offenders who re-offend, often have five or ten years follow-up. So even, and then it takes a long time to collect the data, score, you know, code the data, run analyses, this, that, and the other. So so if there's a study that comes out now with a 10-year follow-up of sex offenders, those sex offenders were probably released um, in the 1990s. Uh, so it really does take a long time for research to catch up. And so it really only has been in the last five to 10 years that we're starting to look at internet sex offenders. And we've been very slow on that and not a lot of good follow-up studies on recidivism. Uh, you know, things to just highlight how old I am. Your trivia for the day. When I started university, Facebook hadn't even been invented yet. Um, and now it's considered uncool and only for old people. So things really have changed. And so, uh, uh, so some statistics from uh, Michael Cito's book, uh, Toronto in particular, he has a lot of data from, that's where he's done a lot of work. He lives in Kingston now. Um, he worked for many years at the Center for Addictions and Mental Health. You might remember Cam H from the lecture on substance abuse. They produce every two years that fabulous um, surveys of high school students um, looking at their, their substance use behavior. So at the Center, Center for Addictions and Mental Health, they get a lot of referrals for assessments for people in the criminal justice system. Uh, and they were noting already that by 2005, over 15% of the cases referred to them were cases of child pornography looking, you know, at online. Whereas prior to that, and even, you know, at 2005, all of the research on, you know, virtually 100% of the, the research on sex offenders was looking at samples that would have had no child pornography cases um, or, you know, hardly any, like maybe at most half a percent of the offenders in the sample. So the availability of the internet, online child pornography offenses, you know, really exploded in prevalence and in our ability to, to actually catch and charge them. And they consistently, they, they started to become a very sizable proportion of most sex offender populations. And almost all of the research, all of the meta-analyses that were originally conducted by Carl Hansen just don't, um, don't speak to this population. So there's a lot of interest in the field of whether, you know, basically decades of research that we have on sex offenders, does that actually apply to child pornography offenders online or are they a different type of offender? Uh, and so Michael Cito, along with Kelly Babshishan um, and Carl Hansen, have conducted some meta-analyses on this. Uh, Kelly Babshishan was the first author of them. And generally what we're finding so far in terms of characteristics is compared to other, you know, other types of sex offenders are traditional sex offenders. Internet sex offenders um, tend to have higher levels of sexual deviance, so they're more likely to be sexually interested in children, but they have lower general antisociality. So all those um, factors that you see among criminals in general, they have lower rates of those. Uh, and there's an important distinction between online only and mixed online offline offenders. So sex offenders who commit sex offenses on the internet as well as um, in real life contact sex offenses are the highest risk. Whereas those who commit sex offenses only online tend to be the lowest risk offenders. And so far the data is suggesting that internet sex offenders are the lowest risk to reoffend compared to other types of sex offenses. Um, 
And another question that people often want to know is, uh, are they, you know, essentially if someone's looking at child pornography online, for example, is it inevitable that they're going to commit a sex offense against a child or they already are? Um, and they're just, in addition, they're also looking at child porn online. Uh, and so looking at samples of internet sex offenders, about one in eight have an official criminal record for a contact sex offense. Uh, there have been a few studies that have been able to use anonymous self-report data so offenders can um, disclose if they've committed a contact sex offense without uh, legal repercussions to themselves and in those surveys um, half of them report that they have committed a contact offense so clearly uh, there's a bunch that haven't been caught for it but they have uh, committed a contact sex offense on the other hand though um, glass half full what that also means is that roughly half of internet sex offenders um, are not committing contact sex offenses so there is a huge chunk that are online offenders only um, I'm also going to talk about female sex offenders. Uh, this is an area, sex offender research in particular, I could have done so many other um, spotlights on Canadian researchers. Franca Cortoni is the uh, kind of most well-known expert on female sex offenders. She's at the University of Montreal. Uh, and so female sex offenders are smaller in proportion. There's actually a new meta-analysis came out with Franca Cortoni and with Kelly Babshishan. Um, and it suggests that it, it, you know, varies depending on where you look, but roughly somewhere in the criminal justice system, roughly about 3% of uh, sex offenders in the criminal justice system are female. So very, very few females relative to males get charged or convicted of sex offenses. But there's some idea that, you know, uh, people have these stereotypes that women don't commit sex offenses and they're less likely to charge them. There's particularly a very um, harmful stereotype that if uh, a male teacher um, has sex with a female student, that's predatory and, you know, sex offender. But if a female teacher has sex with a male student, that that's, you know, awesome for the male student and he's lucky, uh, as opposed to recognizing that that is sexual abuse of a minor and should be treated in, in the same way. Um, so there is some idea that maybe female sex offenders are less, even less likely than male sex offenders to get caught or charged. Uh, from victimization surveys, the same meta-analysis by Franca Cortoni and Kelly Babshishan found uh, that if you ask people in victimization surveys who's been sexually victimized, roughly 10 to 11 percent of them say that their abuser was a female. Uh, so there is a suggestion that they're um, uh, underrepresented in the criminal justice system, but even so, so that's suggesting from victimization data that 90% of sex offenders out there are male. Um, and so there's a, similar to internet sex offenders, there's a lot of questions in the field of are female sex offenders similar to male offenders? Should we use the same methods of assessment and treatment and management? Or do we need to throw out the book and do you know, completely new research to understand female sex offenders? Um, and the research is suggesting so far that female sex offenders are uniquely different than male sex offenders. They are much less likely to sexually reoffend, um, and there's data suggesting that the risk factors for uh, onset and recidivism among female sex offenders might be meaningfully different than male sex offenders. So there might be different causal risk factors. Um, and one key example that I'm going to highlight is that the vast majority of male sex offenses commit their offense by themselves. However, um, some research is suggesting it, it varies, but some research is suggesting roughly half Half of female sex offenders commit their sex offense with another perpetrator, typically a male partner, a boyfriend or a husband. Um, so they tend to get involved with a male and, and it's in that combination of being involved with a male that they commit sex offenses against children. So it may be sometimes um, you might see this in uh, a man um, marries a woman um, and convinces her to uh, to let him sexually abuse her children or even convinces her to participate um, in the abuse. Um, and the, the in these situations, the women vary in how active and involved they are in the abuse, but that's a much more common scenario that we really don't see with male sex offenders. So uh, yeah, so the research suggesting female offenders, female sex offenders are quite different. Uh, that in a nutshell then is the last of this lecture, and this also makes it the last lecture of this course. I want to take a moment again and thank you guys for your patience as we converted everything online. I know that this has been a stressful semester for all of you. I know this isn't what you've signed up for, but 
but I am proud of you for getting through this and I'm wishing you guys all the best as you study for the final exam and uh, email myself or your TA Susanna if you have any questions. Take care. Bye.